to the Digest, one of the sessions in the Digest. I'm waving. I'm Filip Malikovic from Serbia, and I've been chosen to give this presentation today about uh, university level uh, education or how Wikipedia fits in to education and on university level. So digests are generally envisioned to be sessions where we talk about, give an overview of a topic and give a short sort of uh, introduction to everyone who is not aware of the, the concept and just, you know, try to explain what's going on there. It's a um, pretty general topic. So, um, let's start. No, different buttons. Um, so, I wanted to start with this, um, this saying, this, this sentence, Wikipedia belongs in education. Um, that's something that we like to say in, uh, in Wikipedia education program. That's sort of a, a, a thing. And um, Wikimedia Foundation is so, sort of devoted to, to that part of the whole movement, education, and Wikipedia and education, and Wikimedia and education. And uh, they've figured out this tagline, Wikipedia belongs in education because it makes sense. And uh, you might have seen some of us or some of other people wearing the uh, t-shirts, Wikipedia <laughs> belongs in education. There are some people over there and we, we might have some left, maybe. Um, no. <laughs> okay. Um, but anyway, Wikipedia does belong in education and we'll see why. So why university level? Um, you might think, uh, okay, yes, I want to start an education program or I want to be within an education program, but why, why university level? Well, I, there are probably many more uh, reasons, but I've, I selected these. Uh, first, uh, compared to other students, uh, other pupils, uh, university level students generally have a good skill set for writing articles. And writing articles is something that we're, we're all passionate about and most of us really want to for education program to produce. So we, um, if we compare them to, uh, say, elementary school, uh, elementary school students, pupils, um, they're not as good as uh, university level students in writing articles. So that might be a good incentive to, to start doing uh, university level work. Also, uh, institutions and university level are generally free. They have relative freedom to determine what they want to do and how they want to do it. And whereas uh, elementary or high schools, or middle schools or whatever you call them, uh, are generally part of a much bigger picture and generally need more top-down approach. And it, it might not necessarily be true, of course, uh, but then in general, university level uh, institutions are much freer to do what they want and how they want it. And of course, some Wikipedians that we have around here as well, but in Wikipedia in general, are also university uh, students. So that might help with them being uh, the ambassadors, uh, online ambassadors or offline ambassadors. Um, they can help with uh, spreading the idea and being the evangelists, etc. cetera. Um, so how, do, how can we involve such students? How can we uh, make them a part of our movement? And how can we... Uh, make them a part of Wikipedia education pro program. So um, first off, it doesn't necessarily have to be Wikipedia, but if we want to focus on Wikipedia, because it is the largest project, um, the, the main, as I said, the, the most, um, the easiest the, the, the task or something that comes to mind for most often for us is writing or improving articles. So um, you can give them assignments to do uh, be it on class, in class or at home, and they can complete the uh, the assignments and give, get points for that, um, or not. Um, they can fix mistakes, add references, fix grammar, uh, typos, whatever. So those are some uh, smaller changes, smaller edits that can be much easier to, to do uh, in a, say, a, a setting where you don't have a lot of proficient um, students in, in editing Wikipedia. So that's something that can be entry level and then you can move on to writing or improving articles in a more meaningful way. Um, of course, other than Wikipedia, you can, you can be involved with Wiktionary where you can write uh, word articles uh, about words in different languages and it works well in uh, studies re regarding philology or languages um, where you can write actually um, multi-language dictionaries 
Uh, and we in Serbia have an example of this, writing a Serbo-Arabic uh, dictionary, uh, which we call 1001 Arabic words. Um, and it's something that has sparked interest in other uh, fields at the University of Belgrade. And um, it's an interesting way for students to get involved with not necessarily Wikipedia, but also uh, other Wikimedia projects where they can write and learn the, the, the technical parts of aspects of, of writing uh, articles and also uh, do some stuff that actually is fun for them. Um, they can write uh, on Wikibooks, they can write manuals, guides, um, textbooks or actually even Wiki Wikiversity, uh, although I don't think that's been exploited too much around, around the world, but I think it's open for, for uh, trials. Um, of course, Wikimedia Commons is very, very easy to, to use, like in, in, in a way that you can upload photos pretty easily, and you can um, task, give tasks to your students to upload photos, and, um, and like that, just very easily uh, get into Wikipedia and, of course, uh, use those images and photos uh, in, their, in other articles around Wikipedia or other Wikimedia projects. Uh, of course, there's cr critical thinking uh, that uh, can be uh, sort of used. You can teach your students how to uh, interpret articles, how to uh, read them, how to uh, understand them better, how to uh, use references and validate um, facts and, and um, other sources. So there's obviously a variety of ways how you can um, bring your students into the Wikimedia world. Um, but also there are so many considerations that, that you need to think of if you want to start a, a program. So um, if we're talking about university level courses, you can, of course, it depends on the circumstances and the context. But the courses where you can be, you can involve your students, can be either elective or required, uh, in terms of uh, whether some students will take the course or all of them. Um, and of course, it helps when it's all of them uh, in terms of getting more uh, content. But then it can be a bit more stressful if you <laughs> have thousands of students <laughs> in one semester. Um, so that, that there's the problem of scalability. Uh, of course, selecting topics. Um, obviously, if you want to, um, if you're having, you, if you have a course on uh, mechanical engineering, for instance, it might make sense to write articles, task your students to write articles in that field. But it doesn't necessarily have to be that way. Um, you can give. Uh, any sort of topic. I mean, Wikipedia is wide enough for everyone to write about what they want. And what we have done, at, at least in Serbia, is in, in a few examples, uh, we, can, we gave some students the task of writing articles in, their, in the field of, of the subject. But also, for extra points, they could write articles about what they wanted. And that proved very um, incentivizing for them because they, they were motivated to write more articles because they wanted to, they, they were able to write about things that interest them. So that proved to be something useful and it's a valid consideration. Of course, a number of articles per person is something that's also um, something that to think about. Uh, generally, you can give one article per person. It can be a quite long article and you have your content. But then if, you're, if the topic is such that uh, articles produced might not necessarily be quite large. You can give them several articles or you can actually group people into writing huge articles uh, by one group. And that's what we had at the Faculty of Philology in Belgrade where students wrote in a groups of six to seven wrote huge articles on Serbian Wikipedia that were par, up to par with uh, featured articles and they were really, really good. But they used also a different technique called Kanban, which is a part of a um, also uses Scrum methodology and it was completely different, but very, very interesting experiment and useful and we had great results. Um, Wikipedians then, that can be manageable, but you know, at one point you will always reach a limit of when, what you can handle as a person or as a team. So um, you need to think about scalability and uh, getting more help from lo local Wikipedians or experienced uh, students who have uh, become so experienced that they could be online, offline help at the campus, um, that can be very, very useful and tremendously helpful. So um, you can actually go in that direction and start thinking about how you can scale it up. And of course, you can go in iterations. If in one year, um, some students uh, are 
very good, they excel, and you think you can maybe use them for next year so that they could get extra credit for, for instance, uh, being offline or campus ambassadors, uh, that could be also very helpful. Um, of course, you, can, you have to think about deadlines. Um, and uh, from our, our experience, because I come from a medium-sized wiki, giving one deadline for 100 students might not be the best idea, because students are generally, you know, they like working everything <laughs> Um, near the deadline. So we have a great influx of uh, articles uh, Sunday night on <laughs> near the first, for instance, in, in a month. So um, it might make sense to spread that out or um, sort of think about it more thoroughly in order to, to prevent uh, community um, outrage or something. Um, and of course, evaluation and grading is something that's also very important. Uh, if you are a teacher or a professor and uh, you are doing the grading, then you can set your own rules. And, and, um, uh, but if, if you're not, if you're just online help or just Wikimedia or Wikipedia site help, then grading is probably in, not in your hands but the professors. But you can evaluate the project in terms of how it went, wh how, it went how you can improve on it, and how uh, everything can work out better in the future. So when we're talking about scalability and growth, my sort of experience and advice uh, is to start start small. Um, if you have too much ambition, it's not probably not going to work out well unless you have um, a lot of help and a lot of experience. Uh, but uh, if you start small and then grow steadily, I think that is probably going to work uh, well. Um, of course, it helps to have employees. Um, that's not something that we can say okay, do have employees, you know, it has, to ha it has to come naturally. And we in Serbia do have an employee, and uh, it's uh, not the only case around the world. We have Sarah here <laughs> uh, from Wikimedia Sweden, uh, who's also tasked with education stuff. So uh, that also helps with uh, sustaining the project because it uh, gives a dedicated person who can be there for uh, talks with uh, new institutions, for institutional help, etc. Uh, and of course, you can use resources. Uh, that's also very, very important, and that will be on the next slide. But um, first, uh, I wanted to mention that we have a um, portal, and I'll mention that again, and um, uh, education portal. And there is a list of countries that are involved in education program. And out of 92 uh, countries that are currently listed, and that might be outdated, so please, if you know something that's not there, please add, add information. Um, 72 countries are involved in, in some way with university level education. So I think that that kind of proves that it's an important aspect of education plus Wikipedia in, in the world. So um, that sort of combination. So um, I invite you to add uh, more info to educationwikimedia.org. Um, uh, it re uh, redirects to the Outreach Wiki, Outreach Wikimedia Org, uh, the Education Portal, and you can find a lot of resources there. And I've listed some of here, some of them here, like the toolkits, the uh, brochures, which are uh, very interesting, and you can localize them. It, it should be pretty easy to localize them in your own language, if that helps. And you can print them out, um, and they're supposed to be printed out, but they're also available as PDFs, so you can. Um, give them out uh, electronically. Um, there are also some sort of trainings and extensions. Uh, well, there's an education extension, but it's deprecated, so don't use it. But there's a dashboard coming along pretty soon uh, that's supposed to um, help us uh, you know, calculate metrics and follow the pro progress and follow the work of students. But also, not, not always, not just students, but also any sort of group of people, cohort or uh, yeah, event, anything that has a, a sort of a group that can, um, that can be followed and where you can measure any sort of things. And I, I have to say thanks to uh, Sage Ross, who's here, uh, who's been developing um, the, the dashboard and who's been a tremendous help for, um, for all of this. And um, yeah, and there's also Wikimetrics, uh, which might be uh, actually required if you're part of the Wikimedia Foundation grant schemes. Um, but if not, they're also useful to, for following what's been going on and following trends and how you can improve uh, on, your, um, on yourself. So um, there's, this is a sh small showcase because I'm running out of time, sorry. 
Uh, yeah, uh, I'm running out of time, uh, so I'll be pretty quick. This is uh, an example from Tel Aviv, uh, from the Tel Aviv University uh, and Sackler School of Medicine. Uh, Israel has been involved with a lot of education stuff, and you'll he hear from Esther something um, in a different level. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm really proud of them because they're, they rock. Um, and then we have uh, Czech Republic. We have... Uh, we have Marek Blachus, who's here in the, in the audience, and he's a leader of the uh, Maastricht University in Brno um, pro program or project in the Faculty of Arts, and that's been going out great, as, as I hear. Um, there's also Tech de Monterrey, Mexico City and Mexico, uh, but also Tech de Monterrey is all around Mexico, and it's supposed to spread out to the rest of the country. Uh, Lee Telmedatter, who might be here or not. She's at the conference. She's uh, spearheading that, and it's an awesome project. You should talk to her um, if you have any questions. Um, and also, we have something newer. Venus, there she is. Um, she's from Hong Kong, and she's been doing some grassroots activities at her own faculty. So you don't have to have a team, like a great team, like Tech de Monterey. This is done by dozens of people, and it's super exciting, but then we have one person who's doing great work in a smaller locale, and I think that also goes to prove that you can have something successful and nice, even though if you're by yourself. So, thanks, Venus. Um, and then I have to promote my country, uh, Serbia. We did this um, a few years back at the Faculty of Philology, but we also cooperate with a dozen other uh, universities, uh, faculties at the University of Belgrade and other universities. So, yeah, that's about it. Thank you for your attention. If there is any question time, we have like one minute or two. Or not, uh, we can go to Esther. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> question? Oh. <laughs> Just a second. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, I'm with the Dutch Wikimedia chapter and I'm currently writing a brochure for the, uh, about education in Dutch, which is going to be the first one. One of the things I was looking at is um, if as a teacher you want to get involved in Wikipedia, it means you have to spend a lot of extra time in education. Uh, what kind of arguments would you give that teacher to spend that extra time on education instead of, say, research or grant writing or... Something like that. Yeah, uh, that's a great question because uh, we've been having, you know, issues. I mean, a lot of thing, people, are, I think, around the world have been having s the same issues. Um, what we generally uh, tell uh, the teachers uh, or professors is that uh, you get something in return. You get modern. You get something uh, new and exciting, like Wikipedia. And uh, some students tend to like Wikipedia. They use it all the time, and it's it's a way to connect. Um, something new with something old, like uh, the Netherlands has one of the oldest universities there, right? So it's, it's tradition, but then tradition meets new age and you get something extraordinary, I think. Uh, but then, I mean, at least that's the argument that worked in Serbia, that there might be some other um, arguments that have worked elsewhere. Um, if anyone wants to share, that would be good. Uh, but as I said, uh, Generally, in the end, I mean, after 10 years of having Wikipedia education program in Serbia, people have started approaching us. So, uh, I guess word of mouth also plays a role. Right. Yeah. So, uh, Shani is going to talk about uh, exactly the same thing at 4.30 in the theater, right? Uh, in the theater. So, uh, please join us. And Ariane? Yeah, um, another uh, question. Uh, are there any instances of uh, this going school-wide or university-wide? So it's just not sp some specific volunteer teachers, but uh, every professor doing it. Right, so um, at least in my context, there is n not such a thing because faculties are generally uh, independent as, as much as they can be. But then we have the example of Tech de Monterey, where it's the, the whole university is involved and sh and will, or will be involved. So I think it depends on the approach. If you go from top down and you approach the, the university itself, then there might be a chance that it can work 
for the whole university, but then if you approach only one school or faculty or college, then you know, it's, it might not spread that easily because it's bottom up. Everything can work, I think, but you need to have the right context. All right. Thanks. No, we have her. Thanks.